but I think, you know, um, I think one of the challenges I think many people have is really the discernment of information. Uh, it's really difficult to, to know what's the truth anymore just because information is so accessible. And I used to say that in an age of information, ignorance is a choice. And, and now we have to confront a whole nother level, and that is the information that we're getting uh, is it is it actually supporting us or is it something that really is an incentive to to cause us to make choices so um, for me I think the biggest challenge has been just really an awakening to what kind of information I want to expose myself to and I and I think it's now more than ever a challenge for a lot of people in the world first of all every time we have a thought we make a chemical and and if you have uh, uh, an unlimited thought, you will feel unlimited. And if you have a, a self-depreciating thought, you'll feel unworthy. And your brain instantaneously fires circuits that signal another part of the brain to release peptides or chemical messengers that signal hormonal centers. And when we get that arousal from the thought that we think, uh, those thoughts sometimes weaken, the response weakens the physical body. So it turns out that the emotions that are created from the thoughts are the signaling mechanisms of the body. Thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body and how we think and how we feel uh, creates our state of being. The moment you think about your problems, you're thinking in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Now every one of those problems has an emotion associated with them because we've experienced them. So the moment you remember your problems, now you feel unhappy, now you feel anxious, now you feel fear. So the moment we feel those emotions, it takes a thought and a feeling, a memory or an image and an emotion, a stimulus and a response, and we start conditioning the body emotionally into the past. Now the body is so objective that it doesn't know the difference between the real life experience that's creating that emotion and the emotion that person's fabricating by thought alone. The body's believing it's in that environmental condition. So if the environment signals the gene, and that's the truth, and the end product of an experience is in the environment is an emotion, <laughs> we're signaling the same genes, and genes make proteins. And if you keep signaling the same genes, you start down-regulating the gene and make cheaper proteins, and the body begins to break down. Now, So now you have the familiar past and you have the predictable future. Those are knowns. So the only place then, reasonably, where the unknown exists is the sweet spot of the generous present moment. That is when the body and mind are free from those conditions. So along with those emotions that influence the same thoughts, people start becoming more judgmental. They start becoming more impatient. They start becoming more entitled. Uh, they start getting more afraid, more anxious, more depressed. And now the body is literally being depleted of energy because it's believing that it's living in an emergency situation. And in emergency, you tap all of the body's resources for some threat, whether it's real or imagined. Here comes the challenge, right? So, and, and then if you say then, you're not gonna live in the familiar, uh, familiar past or predictable future, you're not gonna think about how long you've been meditating, what you gotta do, you, you labor uh, for that present moment. People think when they do this that they're doing something wrong because there's such discomfort that comes with it. But they're in the unknown. They're actually doing it right. People say, I think I'm meditating wrong. I always say, oh, no, 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 you're doing it right. Because when you notice that your body wants to get up and check your cell phone or have a cup of coffee and you become aware that it's on autopilot and wants to do that, and you say, uh -uh, come on over here, and you return it back to the present moment, you're executing a will. So there's sometimes a shortcut in the process yeah, yeah. Uh, if, we're, if we really learn and we really get it. But the trial and error is so important mm -hmm. because not only is the person earning the right to be wealthy, but they're earning the right to live in worthiness, yeah. worthy to receive. Like, hey, you, people, people come to our work all the time for a lot of reasons, and one of the common reasons is they want to get healthy yeah. and because they're, you know, they're dealing with a very serious health condition. And I always say the same thing to him. Stop wanting to be healthy. Learn the formula yeah. on how to get healthy. Learn the formula on how to heal, and the healing will be the side effect of it. Mm -hmm. If you're obsessing about why am I not healed, you're still the old person. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to become that person every day, right? And then if you said, well, listen, I'm not going to wait for my healing to feel gratitude. I'm not going to wait for my new relationship to feel love. I'm going to actually teach my body emotionally mm-hmm. what that future feels like before it happens. Now, mm-hmm. this is a big turnaround for a lot of people because... We're so reliant on the outer world to change our inner world, right? And waiting and postponing. And waiting is not creating. I mean, period. And when people are, they could have the greatest intentions in the world, but if they don't combine that with an elevated emotion, there's no signal because the elevated emotion is the carrier. It's the energy that carries the thought. So then when we're in separation, in lack, waiting for our wealth to feel abundance, we're basically living our whole life Mm -hmm. in pain, right? I have seen in the last couple of years, blind people seeing, deaf people hearing, people with strokes that were paralyzed, moving their limbs, people with Parkinson's disease that had tremors or paralysis, moving, MS, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, rare genetic disorders, uh, tumors, there it is, then it's gone. You can't tell me you're too sick to do this work. I mean, uh, of course, people come up against themselves. <laughs> and when they come up against themselves, those sick people came up against their fear, like you're going to die in three months. And they had every reason to not do the work, mm-hmm. but they showed up in spite of their fear and they overcame their fear a little bit more. There were people that had self-doubt and they, their, their condition was getting worse and their family was worried about them. They could have doubted and said, I, I, I give up, but they showed up for themselves again and they overcame their doubt a little bit more. There were days that they were really feeling sick mm. and their body was really failing and they could have said, I'm too sick to do this meditation. They did it sometimes two or three times a day because nothing else was working. Yeah. And, and they overcame their body. They could have said, I don't have enough time. I got kids, I got obligations, I got a job. They, they showed, they made the time to do it. And th- that was the overcoming process. You can't, you can't tell me that um, you're too out of shape. You, mm. can't, you can't tell me, you know, you're, you're too old. We have elders in this work. I can show you brain scans that are so elegant and so beautiful. And the arousal that they're having is ecstasy. It's coherence in the brain. And the people who actually overcome their fear and they trade it for gratitude. Their immune system gets stronger. Uh, their genes upregulate. I mean, there's just a host of uh, uh, everything. Change their brain changes. Their heart rate variability. They're, they're, they feel differently, and it's yeah. it's being measured. And and some of these people, uh, we're measuring this now in our in our events with with reputable scientists and in, in, in universities. They're they're shocked at what they're witnessing on a cellular level, on a brain level, on a heart level. They cannot believe the capacity of the body. I just was. I just got an email today of a sci- one of our scientists said, "I ran this three times. <laughs> the virus that we exposed the cell to in advanced meditators does not enter the cell. It's outside the cell. It won't. A virus in novice meditators. Some of it's in the cell. Some of it's outside. Controls." All the viruses in the cell, there's an immunity. So when the person's less reactionary to their environment, there's less of response that weakens them, they're less of a victim to their environment, then they're less of a victim to their environment. When you believe in yourself, you believe in possibilities. When you believe in possibilities, you got to believe in yourself. You don't show up for yourself. You don't believe in it. Yeah. And, and that's why people don't do the work. I mean, if you, you believe that your thoughts create a reality, you would show up every day and create. And so a lot of people believe in their past more than they believe in their future. A lot of people fall in love or more in love with their past or romance their past instead yeah. of romance their future or love their future. It's, it's that simple. So the initiation process of life is always going to be there. You're always going to be challenged. This is the, this is the great part. And when a person finally breaks through from the chains, and there's a different consciousness, a freedom that happens. They look back at their past. They want to change one thing in their past because it brought them to that present moment. That's the past no longer existing. That's the freedom. So is it worth the effort? Yeah, it's no longer about healing. It's no longer about abundance. It's about who you're becoming. The cool part is like when you hit pay dirt like that, when you connect, when you connect to the field, when you connect to the divine, whatever you want to call it, when your consciousness merges with a greater consciousness and that arousal creates ecstasy, bliss, oneness, whatever you want to call that, you realize that it never came from anything out there. 
It yeah. didn't come from the wardrobe or the facelift or sports car or whatever. It, it came from within you. And so you stop looking out there for it. Mm. And now the love affair begins. Mm. And you never want to miss a date because it's just too good. Mm. So that memory then, that is what I'm after. Because when you have those transcendental moments and you understand this, yeah. the experience of that transcendental moment lays down new circuitry in the brain. That's what experience does. Yeah. And the experience produces a feeling, but it's not chemical. It's electric and it's orderly and every cell of your body is jig jiggling in an order. You can't create a future without putting your heart into it. And if your heart, if you're throwing your heart into your future, it better be activated and, yeah. and coherent. Yeah. 